Well, hello! We are almost done with 2 Chronicles. If you've made it this far, hats off to you. We are in 2 Chronicles chapter 35, and we only have one more study after today. Now, you're already going to know the kind of the end of the story of 2 Chronicles if you were with us for our first king study and second king study. But uh, the, the decision now is where to go next, because I thought, well, we could just go you know, to the next book, but it's not exactly chronological, and it might kind of confuse us as far as telling the story of the Old Testament. So it's like, yeah, we can go chronological, but then there's there's issues with that because a lot of the books overlap each other and overlap many, many years and overlap other books. And so it's like, well, which one do I do? Do I go to Psalm? Because that was written by David. And do I go to Job? Because a lot of people think that's way before, uh, you know, back in the days of Genesis. So, so there's a lot to consider. If you, have a, if you have a preference, leave it down in the comments and I'll take it into consideration. I would like to try to go somehow kind of chronological, but... There are challenges. Anyway, let's talk about chapter 35 today. We are going to finish up talking about the reign of Josiah in Judah. He was king for 31 years from approximately 640 to 609 or 608 BC. Key characters in chapter 35 include Josiah, who was king of Judah, the priests and the Levites. They play a really big role in fulfilling Josiah's command for the people to take or to remember the Passover feast and to observe the Passover feast much like in the days of Hezekiah. Then we have Pharaoh Necho. He was the leader of Egypt. Josiah is going to fight with him while he is on his way up north to a place called Carchemish, probably to fight the Assyrians. And then at the end of the chapter, we're going to very briefly mention Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet of God who lived during this time. His books, he's the author of several books, Jeremiah and Lamentations, but they don't appear till later on in the the Old Testament. We'll get to those eventually. And that's why it's hard because we, uh, you know, we have Isaiah. We already mentioned Isaiah. He's got a big book. We need to cover that. He's already been alive. And now we got Jeremiah. He's got a big book. And so where do we fit all these things? These are the questions of five minute Bible study creation. Three key locations to talk about and two of them are on the map. First, Jerusalem. We know for sure that one's on the map. That's the capital of Judah and Josiah's kingdom. Carchemish. Carchemish is new. That one's not on the map. It is way up north of Jerusalem, about 380 miles or 612 kilometers. The Assyrians and the Egyptians are going to fight there in a couple years, but Pharaoh Necho is on his way there, taking his army up there. Josiah is going to meet him at Megiddo, and he's going to fight with him there at Megiddo while Pharaoh is trying to go north. We'll see how that battle turns out in our outline. Now, as we go over to our outline, we have two sections, one definitely better than the other. The first section is the good part, verses 1 through 19. Josiah and Judah observe the Passover feast. So as King Hezekiah had done back in chapter 30, Josiah made sure that his people observed the Passover because that was required in God's law. He organized the priests and he set them to work at the temple. He also ordered the Ark of the Covenant to be moved back into the temple. I was actually quite surprised to see a reference to the Ark of the Covenant. We know that in the Old Testament it disappears at some point. I kind of thought that it had already disappeared because we've talked about the temple being plundered like again and again, but evidently they still have the Ark of the Covenant. It had been removed from the temple. We're not exactly told why, but Josiah moves it back into the temple here, or rather he orders the priests to move it back into the temple uh, as they are preparing for this Passover. Josiah gave the people 30,000 lambs and 3,000 bulls to use as part of the Passover feast, and also the chiefs of the Levites and the officials gave thousands of more animals. So plenty of animals to, to go around for the sacrificing. The Levites and the priests sacrificed the animals that were necessary at the temple, part of the, the temple worship, and the people prepared their Passover lamb to eat at, during the Passover meal, as was prescribed in the law of God. Remember, the Passover was to remember, it was an, an observance, a memorial of God helping the people of Israel escape from slavery in Egypt. And the text says this in verse 18, quote, no Passover like it had been kept in Israel since the days of Samuel the prophet, and that was centuries ago. None of the kings of Israel had kept such a Passover as was kept by Josiah and the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel who were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And so it seems like there were the people of Judah and Jerusalem who were present. There were also some people from Israel, and that's very similar to the Passover that Hezekiah kept. Now we come to the end of chapter 35 and the end of Josiah's life, verses 20 
through 27. Josiah is killed while fighting with Pharaoh Necho. So Pharaoh Necho, the king of Egypt, was moving his army north, really north, up to the Euphrates River to the city of Carchemish. But on the way, he was intercepted by Josiah, and Josiah wanted to fight him. Now, it seems like the Egyptians were interested in fighting the Assyrians, and so Necho sent messengers to Josiah, and he says, I'm not interested in fighting with Judah. You're not really my enemy. And interestingly, he told Josiah that God told him to hurry on his way, and that if Josiah chose to fight him, he would actually be opposing God. The text does seem to indicate that this was actually a message from God because I think it's the very next verse says, Josiah, quote, did not listen to the words of Necho from the mouth of God, but led his army to battle at Megiddo against the Egyptians. The Egyptians are trying to avoid it. Josiah insists on it, even after hearing the message that, that God had told Necho not to fight him. Well, the battle didn't go very well. In the process of the battle, Josiah was shot by archers. He was taken back to Jerusalem injured, but he eventually died of his wounds in Jerusalem. And so that is 2 Chronicles chapter 35, and this final battle leads us into an application for us today. There are some earthly struggles that the people of God don't need to involve themselves in. We don't know exactly what motivated Josiah to insist on this battle. Maybe it was political loyalty, maybe it was some hope of advancing his nation, some strategy that he had played out in his head, but seemingly he did it without God's blessing. Josiah would have been better off staying in Jerusalem, continuing his reforms, and strengthening his people. And I think there's a lesson here for Christians, and that is that there are some fights, political or otherwise, that we should not be spending all of our time and energy pursuing. There are some fights that we should not be extinguishing ourselves in. There are a million battles that we can get ourselves entangled in in this world. People are always fighting about something. People are always struggling over something. But the majority of our time and our energy as soldiers of Christ needs to be devoted to Christ, his church, and the direct mission of the church. Paul talks about soldiers not getting caught up in, in side engagements. Soldiers of, of Jesus not being caught up or entangled in the things of this world but rather knowing who they serve. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, he says, Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. Oh no, we have a man down. Must save our fellow soldier.